Hi guys, another application for position vectors. Now we have the position of a plane and the position of a train. And at that particular instant, we are asked to calculate the distance between A and B. Remember, every time that you have any problem that is asking you to calculate the distances, it most probably you're going to have to use position vectors for that, which implies, you know, finding the coordinates and subtracting the coordinates. So you could you could write that if you want to. Please, please uh, first find coordinates of points. Find position vector. Find magnitude, which is the distance. And that's kind of the approach that we're going to be following all the time. And as you can see here, those are projection angles. Uh, they could be alpha, beta, and gamma, but they are not because see, they are not measured directly from the axis. So basically, you have this plane here, and and you can see that the projection over the x, y plane is just this one here. And if I ask you at any point, at any moment, to calculate the the height of the plane A, the height of the plane A, as you can see, this is five kilometers here. This is 60. This is opposite, so it would be five sine 60. And if I want to find this line as an intermediate step, because if I need the coordinates of that point, that would be this, uh, basically this distance in X, this distance in Y, and this distance in C. We already had the, the distance in C. Now, in order to find this in X, I it, it is convenient to find this line and then project that line over the X axis. How do you find that line? That line will be five. This is adjacent to the 60, so it's going to be five cosine 60. And then once I have that, I just project that line over the axis, meaning the value that I had before, it was five cosine 60. That's that line. And now I'm going to get that line, and I'm going to project that line over this axis. And this is adjacent to the 35, so it's going to be cosine 35. That will be that distance, that coordinate there. And for this one, in the y direction, is similar. This line is 5 cosine 60. And then I'm going to multiply that 5 cosine 60, and I'm going to project it over the y-axis. And it's opposite to the 35, so that will be sine 35. That kind of takes care of the coordinates of the point A. So the coordinates of the point A will be, if I put the point A here as just coordinates, the coordinates will be in X. This is X. 5 cosine 60 cosine 35 in the X direction. But now keep in mind something. Even though this goes to the right, the positive direction of the X axis is given by wherever you find that indication, that letter over there. So if you find that letter over there, that means that the positive is to the left. I mean, that's negative then. So it's going to be negative, and it's going to be negative, whatever I have there, 5 cosine 60, 5, 5 cosine 60, cosine 35, 2.048, 2.048. 2.048 in X. Now in Y, this is the Y direction. Same thing, Y positive is coming to the right, and we can see here that this is to the left. So it's going to be negative as well. And it's going to be this value 5 cosine 60 sine 35, which is 1.434. 1.434, 1.434, and the height is just this one, 
5 sine 60 is positive because it's going in the same direction of the positive x-axis. 5 sine 60, 4.3301. 4.3301 ah, Sometimes I put 3, sometimes I put 2, sometimes I put 4 Whatever amount of decimals you feel comfortable with Now, the coordinates of the point B Coordinates of the point B is same thing This is the line This is the line that is on the plane XY That's the only thing that you have to do Sometimes, uh, in order to make these drawings clearer or easier to see, I personally will do lines like this if I have to draw those. Because that will indicate, yeah, listen, this is just on the plane, not the plane, the XY plane. And whatever happens there, basically the train is going here. And first I have to take it up to that line, to the plane. So if I do that, once again, that line, following the same approach that we did before, it was, it would be two kilometers cosine 25, two cosine 25. That would be that line that we have over there, two cosine 25. Now, what is this distance in this triangle? That would be two, and this is opposite to the angle, so that will be 2 sine 25. And now this line, which is here, the only thing that I have to do with this is bring it to this side and bring it to this side, projecting it. When I say bring it, I mean project it. So I have this line, which is 2 cosine 25, and I'm going to bring it here. And this angle is 40. For the, the, the projection or the, yeah, the projection. For this point, the coordinates will be this in Y, this in X, and this in Z. Those are the coordinates for that thing. So in the X direction, in the X direction is this one. It's opposite to 40. This line, I have to bring it to this side this line and this line is 2 cosine 25 so if I'm looking for this I just have to multiply that line by cosine by sine 40 which is opposite 2 cosine 25 cos sine 40 that would be this line here and if you can see that it's coming in the positive direction of the x-axis that's what happens there so that would be positive in the x direction. 2 cosine 25 sine 40. That's the first x coordinate. Now in the y direction, y, 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 y is this one. It will be taking this line, which is 2 cosine 25, and projecting it to this side. But because this angle is 40 and it's adjacent, that would be cosine 40. And that would be the coordinate here. Now, it's going in the positive direction of the y-axis. So that would be 2 cosine 25 cosine 40 degrees. And the last but not least would be the z-coordinate. And the z-coordinate is 2 sine 25. But that's the only one that is below or is coming in the opposite direction of the positive axis so that will be negative over there coordinates of the point b then will be 2 cosine 25 2 cosine 25 sine 40 1.165 uh, the other one is 2 cosine 2 cosine 25 cosine 40 cosine 
1.389. So I don't know what I'm reading here. And the last one will be negative 2 sine 25. 0 0.845. 0 0.845. Now we already have the coordinates of the points, so don't. Coordinates of point A, coordinates of point B. Find the position vector. Listen, if I need to find the position vector or the distance, this is going to sound weird, like a lot of things that I said, but uh, the distance from B to A is the same distance as A to B. And because what I'm looking is for the distance, I don't care if I do the the position vector from A to B or from B to A because at the end I'm looking for the magnitude but be careful because whenever we are discussing moments it has to be position vector has to be from the point where you want to calculate the moment to the any point in the line of action of the force but in this case I can do a minus B or B minus A, and I will get the same magnitude. Now, if I do the position vector AB, if I decide to do that, that will be B minus A. So that will be 1.165 minus minus that. That will be plus 1.165 plus 2.048. That will be 3.213. 3.213i uh, it will be coordinates of B minus the coordinates of A so it will be this minus minus that means that plus 1.389 plus uh, 1.434 and that will be 2.823 J and finally Z of B minus Z of A, so that will be negative minus that, that will make it negative here, 0 0.845 plus uh, 4.3301, 5.175 in K. And this is in kilometers. Now, if you decided to do if you decided to do RBA instead of RAB, what is going to happen is now I'm going to subtract these coordinates minus this coordinate, and it's going to give you exactly the same vector but opposite in direction. Minus 2.823J plus 5.175K. And at the end, at the end, what I need is a magnitude, right? So the distance AB is the same distance BA, and that just will be the square root of 3.213 squared plus 2.823 squared plus 5.175 squared, and that distance between the plane and the train would be 3.213 squared plus 2.823 square plus answer square and then I let take the square root of that means elevated to the point five six point seven one four six point seven one four and the units are kilometers right kilometers there you go another application of position vector simple application and um, I hope that you like it I mean I'm having fun doing these videos I hope that you're having fun watching them see you next time guys